Captain, I'm giving her all she's got, but I've got no more fader. Wow, I love your worship leader's voice. How'd you get that cool distortion effect on it the whole time? Setting your gain right on the console isn't flashy, but it sure does help everything else work better. On today's episode of Sound As Fast As Possible, I'm gonna teach you how to set your mic pre so that your console can sound its best. And hey, if you're new here, go ahead and hit subscribe and ding the little bell to get notified every time I post a new video on making worship sound great at your church. The entire balance of your mix is built on gain structure. After the microphone picks up the sound source, it goes to the preamp first. And that's the first place on the console that we can turn it up or down. The mic pre affects everything else downstream. And when you get it set right, everything else down the line sounds better. Basically, there are two boundaries for setting the gain on your mic pre. Too low and you'll end up with noise and some of your other signal processors might not work as well. If you set the mic pre too high, you'll distort the channel. And on a digital console, that sounds really bad. Like really, really bad. Like, please never ever do that bad. There are two basic schools of thought on how to set the level on your mic pre. The technically correct way is to set your preamp so that the loudest signal coming in on that channel still has a little bit of room before it distorts. That's called headroom. Then you use your fader to set the level for what feels right in the mix. The other way is to set all your faders at zero and get your basic balance on the preamp. So you're mixing musically from the first gain stage. This has a few advantages and it's typically the way that I prefer when I have a real sound check. But first, let me explain the background on the more technically correct way. So the first method is to have the player play or sing as loud as they're gonna play in the performance. That's the first trick and it rarely works that way. Then with the fader down, hit PFL or Q or solo or whatever other word they wanna come up for the thing. This will send the channel's level to the main meter so you can see exactly how much signal you've got coming in on that channel. So you hit PFL and then as they're playing, slowly turn up the gain until you've got good level. Check one, two, check one, two, hey, hey, check, check one, two. Hey, hey, check one, two. And then you can turn up the fader and listen to the output. Start to process it with the high pass filter and EQ, and then you can move on to the next channel. The technical advantage to this is that you're always gonna have enough juice on each channel with enough headroom that you don't distort and enough level that you don't turn up noise. The workflow advantage is that you've got a systematic way to go through every channel and make sure that it's working. This helps you avoid a lot of pitfalls when you're just starting out. The disadvantage is that some channels just don't have to be all that loud. So then you've got a fader that's already too loud at negative 20. You don't wanna deal with that. <coughs> It's not just your channel fader that suffers. You go to reach for an aux send knob and you turn it up a tiny bit and it blows somebody away. That's not any good. The second method, and the one that I typically prefer when I have a sound check, is to put the faders right around zero and balance things on the preamp. This way, everything else is gonna be balanced no matter where it goes. Then if I have an aux send or a monitor mix, if I set all the levels the same, they're gonna be pretty well balanced. Now, one challenge with this comes when musicians have their own monitor mixer, but it's based off of your preamp settings. While they're getting their levels set, you have to work quickly to get your preamps in the right spot. That way they don't have to redo their mix after they've already set their levels. Here's one way to visualize what's going on with the preamp and all the individual monitor mixers. Imagine you have a fire hydrant that's feeding a row of drinking fountains. The preamp is the fire hydrant. Each of the drinking fountains is the personal monitor mixer. And the level of that channel in the monitor mixer is how hard the person's pushing down with their thumb on that drinking fountain. Now each person pushes down just hard enough to get the right amount of level of that stream of water coming out of their drinking fountain. Now if you have, say, an electric guitar player who suddenly thinks he doesn't hear enough of himself in his monitor mix, he waves down the sound guy and says, Hey, sound guy, can you turn me up at the preamp? So the sound tech turns up the preamp, which is like cranking open that fire hydrant. Now that fire hydrant is putting a lot more pressure into everybody's drinking fountain, and some people get sprayed in the face. And all of that because somebody didn't mix their monitors the right way and wanted somebody else to make up for it. Thanks, electric guitar player. Thanks a lot. Don't spray your teammates in the face! Make sure everybody gets a heads up before you adjust the preamp. They probably won't thank you, but they should. Another advantage to setting your faders to zero and then adjusting the preamp is that the faders living around zero gives you the finest control because it's a logarithmic scale. Down at negative 20, one millimeter of fader throw might change two or three decibels. Up at zero, one millimeter of change might only be half a decibel. Now the preamp is the first gain stage, but it's not the only gain stage in the channel. If you boost with EQ or turn up the makeup gain on the compressor, you can clip the channel there as well even if it wasn't clipping at the preamp if you didn't leave enough headroom. 
In most situations, you don't want to overdrive the channel on the console. The exception is when you're mixing rock and roll on a really nice analog desk and you can drive that preamp and cause it to distort, but it just fits the musical style. But if you're watching this, you're probably not already mixing for the Red Hot Chili Peppers. So how do you tell how much room you have before it'll distort? To understand that, we have to talk about metering on a console. In the analog world, we're aiming for 0 dB VU. This is related to a specific voltage and it allows different components to talk to each other and have the same signal level without distorting. Analog consoles are built with headroom above 0 dB VU, so there's room to go above that, but it will start to clip at some point. On really nice analog consoles, there's a gray area between when it's clipping and when it's perfectly clean that has this kind of distortion, saturation, fat sound that I really like. That's one of the reasons that I really like mixing live on analog consoles, but I'll skip the fanboy rant. If we look at the input stage of a digital console, we'll see an analog preamp that's digitally controlled. That means you can recall it. And that's feeding an analog to digital converter, or AD converter. The AD converter takes a picture of the electrical signal coming in and turns it into ones and zeros. It takes 48,000 of those pictures every second and puts each one onto a stair step. With 24-bit digital audio, there are 16 million stair steps between the loudest signal it can measure and the quietest one. So on a digital console, if we run our gain too low, we're not using all of those stair steps. It's kind of like we took a picture too far away and then tried to zoom in digitally. You start to see all the pixels. If we turn our gain too hot, it's like we've zoomed in too far in a picture and cut off part of the subject. Unfortunately, this sounds really bad. And if it's at really high SPLs, it can hurt somebody. So please never, ever do this. This is what digital clipping looks like and sounds like. Hopefully, this is the last time you ever hear this. So how do you know how far you are from clipping your AD converter? Unlike the VU meter on an analog console, digital audio levels are measured in dBFS, or decibels full scale. Basically, zero is the loudest it can capture, and above that, you got nothing left. That's the full scale. Most digital consoles are calibrated so that a signal at 0 dB VU comes into the digital console at negative 18 dBFS. Analog consoles are measuring RMS, or average signal levels, where a digital console is measuring peak levels. Your ear tends to respond more to average levels, so signals with more transients like drums, pianos, and acoustic guitars are going to show up hotter on the digital console's meters compared to things like distorted electric guitars and synth pads. If you gained up your synth pad to the same peak meter level as your snare drum, that synth pad would blow your face off. Now remember, your preamp level is part of a larger system, so you have to watch out for a couple more variables when you're setting up and sound checking to know that your power amps and your master fader are set in the right spot. If the level on your entire mix is about to distort the stereo bus, you may need to turn up your power amps. Then you can let the console operate at its best operating level and let the power amps take care of the level that you need overall. Please, please don't clip the output of your digital console. If you're doing that, it's probably loud, and digital clipping really loud can be really painful. I don't want that for anybody. Make sure you've got enough power amp for your system. On the flip side, if you're trying to balance your levels at the preamps and you're not lighting your meters up very much, that may mean that your power amps are too loud and you need to dial those back a little bit. Now, one more thing that I've run into at churches where they're running the monitor mixes off the preamps at front of house, I tend to need a lot more gain on drums and instruments going to the in-ear monitors than I do at front of house. If that's the case, then I'll pull my VCA down to about negative 10 or so. I mean, that's not an ideal place for that VCA, but I'd rather have one or two faders out of place than all of them on my entire band. Now, I teach all about VCAs, groups, auxes, and how best to use them in the Rowdy Rodeo section of my online sound course for church sound techs. It's a live, interactive course where we go through everything you need to know, but don't know you need to know, and talk about the questions you have and the challenges you're facing at your church. Find out more info through the link in the description below. Now, if you really want to be a sound ninja, you can take your mic level to the next level by memorizing about how much gain each mic needs for each kind of input. If you can have your preamp set before anybody goes on stage, now that speeds up your setup. You can say thank you by hitting thumbs up. For instance, most vocal mics need about 35 to 40 dB of gain. Electric guitar amps with dynamic mics and keyboards going through DIs need about 20 or 25 dB of gain. Acoustic guitars are all over the place, but again, 20, 25 dB is gonna get you in the ballpark. Don't forget to click down below for more info on the sound course Check out more tutorials here, and we'll see you next time.